Glory to God. I welcome you to the service of Oil of Joy Tabernacle. We are reaching out to you from Ilori, Kwara State, Nigeria. We trust that wherever you may be joining us through any of our social media platforms, the Word of God is going to locate you in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, I want to bring a message titled, All That Is In The World. All That Is In The World. And I'm going to read um, two readings quickly. We'll read from Genesis and we'll read from 1 John. All That Is In The World. Genesis chapter 3, beginning the reading from verse 5. I'm reading from the New King James Version. For God knows, now, the, the, the devil was telling Eve in this conversation. All right. For God knows that in the day you eat of, of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Verse 6. So when the woman saw that the tree, please pay attention, was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. Now, let me emphasize something in that verse 6. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, one, that it was pleasant to the eyes, two, and a tree desirable to make one wise, three. Now, let's look at First John so that we can tie these two scriptures together. First John, um, chapter 2, verse 15. Um, the, the, the King James renders it, love not the world, not the things that are in the world, for, the, for whoever loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him, and, and the like. So I want to read that narrative from the NLT, New Living Translation, from verse 15. I'm reading verse 15 and verse 16. Do not love this world, nor the things it offers. Do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. Verse 16. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. I want to read this 16th verse again, the NLT for emphasis. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. Um, I said that the title of this message is All That Is In The World. If you look at the King James, it says, Do not love the world or the things that are in the world. Uh, then it, it goes in verse 6, it says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Now, if you put up that Genesis you know, chapter 3, when Eve saw that number one, the, the stuff was good for food, chapter 3 verse 6. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, now, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and it will make one wise. Now, you will see very accurately 1 John chapter 2 
fused into Genesis chapter 3. All that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, craven for food, the lust of the eyes, things that your eyes love to see, and the pride of life. And that is the desire to make one wise. Now listen, there is no strategy of the devil. There is no temptation of the devil beyond these three areas. And that is why these things are called all that is in the world. Outside these issues that we are talking about, and we talk more succinctly about in a bit, there is no other thing that can ditch anybody. Outside these three factors, the enemy has no other weapon with which he can use to plunge people's destiny into perpetual doom. That's why it's important for you to pay attention to this. Please listen. This was his strategy from the beginning. When the first Adam was going to go down, this was the strategy the enemy deployed. And when man fell for this strategy, the equation changed irredeemably. But we bless God for the last Adam, Jesus Christ, who came to undo the deeds of the enemy. All that is in the world. The first thing, the lust of the flesh. And it says in the NLT, craving for physical pleasure. Lust of the flesh. Craving for physical pleasure. Now, Eve had it to be when she saw that the fruit was good for food. She fell for it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me quickly reveal the enemy's secret to you by which you will live a perpetual, victorious living. Listen. The moment you discover that he has no strategy, he has no scheme, he has no device, outside of these three things, you are free from the onslaught of the devil, at least reasonably. All that is in the world. The lust of the flesh, the craving to satisfy self, the cravings to satisfy self. A lot of people who have embezzled from common patrimony, a lot of people who have gone to jail as a result of embezzlement, a lot of people who have had to bite their fingers in regret, have had to either of these three fallen because the enemy, listen, has no new strategy. All the devil does is that he recycles the same old strategy. Because he's the same old devil. One of the things that you must understand from this preaching is that when your heart, on, you know, your heart opens into understanding, listen, the devil becomes too cheap for you. When your heart opens in understanding, you say, oh, I have overrated this guy. And the truth is that a whole lot of people have overrated the devil. Once you know what your enemy has in his arsenal, you are good to go considerably. He has no new strategy. Listen, um, in our parlance, we hear a lot of times that if you are in ministry, for instance, whether you are even in an industry, you have your own organization, that there are three main temptations by which anybody can go down, particularly a man. They usually use a man in this regard. And they say that it's either you fall into the temptation of money, temptation for um, power, Temptation 
for women. In fact, some people put it in a, in a sequence and they call it three G's. Girls, gold, and glory. That if you are unable to fall for gold, if you are unable to fall for girls, if you are unable to take God's glory, you are good to go. Everything is fused into Genesis 3 and 1 John 2. All, you know why? Because this is all that is in the world. All. Outside of these, the enemy has nothing to tempt you with. I trust that your understanding will come alive. I trust that after this sharing of God's word, you will see the devil as a cheap cake to deal with in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, if you put, please help me put on that um, NLT version of First John that we read. Now, the lust of the flesh, craving for physical pleasure. Please help me keep it there. Craving for physical pleasure. I'm aware that one of the greatest undoings of humanity is love for pleasure. Some people's problem is not the enemy himself, but pleasure. You know what pleasure does? Let me, tell, let me explain in a bit what pleasure does. I, I want to quickly explain these, you know, one after the other. We were taught in, in biology that if you want to kill a frog with hot water, if you have a boiling water in a bowl or in a pot, and you throw the frog into it, the frog, by instinct, will jump out of the boiling water immediately because it comes as a direct hurt to the frog. So it jumps out. So we're taught that the best way to kill a frog by hot water is put the frog in a normal water temperature and start boiling the water gradually. The moment you keep heating the water, we were told that the frog starts adjusting, start adapting, start acclimatizing with that new environment until it no longer gets to the point that it can survive. That is what craving for physical pleasure does. It, it, it lures people from a comfortable zone to a dangerous zone. People initially see that, well, it doesn't matter. It, 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 it doesn't take this much. Just a little here, just a little. The craving, that word craving is a strong word. Because nobody hits gold in any field without craving. Whether even in spiritual matter, you, many times when people get the anointing, one of the things they had to do was that they had to crave for it. Craving means strong desire. Strong longing after something. A crave, wow, for physical pleasure. The Bible talks about this pleasure that the people enjoy the pleasure of sin for a moment. Because that is what happens. The pleasure usually is for a moment, but the, the adverse effect many times outlives people. Eve saw that that offer from Lucifer was good for food. Pleasure, craving after pleasure. Good for food. You know, food gives pleasure. When you crave, that word crave is the underlining factor. Crave for pleasure, physical pleasure, is one of the ways the enemy gets people into the ditch. Now, this is how to check where you are. Check how much you crave for physical pleasure. Now, Mr. Preacher, are you saying that everything about our life is spiritual? We must always read the Bible, talk in tongues, pray, and nothing physical. No, I mean, we, we live in the body. 
but the issue is crave strong desire what is topmost on your agenda is that you get yourself pleasured a lot of people have gone into big hot soup because of this thing so whenever you understand that the devil has no weapon outside of these three things you are set up for a victorious level the next thing the king james says the lust of the flesh then they say the lust of the eyes now in this first john it says in nlt rendition a craving for everything we see a craving for everything we see <laughs> let me tell you those who always go in the direction of their eyes will lose their eyes someday those who always go in the direction of their eyes we lose their eyes someday. Let me remind you of a man, mighty man in the Bible called Samson. He went every way his eyes looked. I see a lady, I like her. In fact, one day he threatened his friend, get me this girl for she pleases me well. Pleasure. Tell your neighbor pleasure. pleasure. Everywhere his eyes went, his life went. And you know what happened eventually? He lost his eyes. A man who, Manahasi, a man who could carry the gate of a whole city and he, he ran uphill carrying the gate of a city, running uphill to pull out the gate of a city is not small work. Put it on his shoulder and ran uphill. Now, one day the man had to beg a lad, Can you show me where the pillar of this building is? He, he, uh, Appealed to the girl, show me where the pillar of this house is. And the Lord said to me in meditation, a man who could trouble his enemy's camp as at will once upon a time. Listen, a man who could trouble his enemy's camp at will once upon a time became a beggar of a small child. You know why he had to beg? He said, lead me to where the pillar is. You know why he had to beg? He has lost his ability to see where the pillars are. Let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, may your eyes not be blind to the pillars that matter. When eyes are lost, you are unable to see things that matter. Because you see, when he was led to the pillar of the house, he held the pillar and he shook and everything came down. No matter how powerful Samson was, until he got to the pillar, listen, until he got to the pillar, until he got to the things that matter, he couldn't rot any exploit. But lack of sight makes you unable to locate things that matter. And when you can't get hold of things that matter, some things cannot come down. A craving for everything, my, my, everything we see. One day, a man that I love for his words, Job, he said, I have made a covenant with my eyes. Every man that is normal will tell you that if you go in the direction of your eyes, if you always go in the direction of, of, of your life, of your eyes, you will never matter in life. As a pastor, as anointed, if you always go in the direction of your eyes, you will lose your eyes off. He says, a craving for everything we see. That was another strategy. The first one, craving for physical pleasure. Next one, next one craving for everything we see. Some people are so, are so weak with things that they see. So weak. Some people don't crave to buy another phone until they see the phone with another person. They don't desire to buy another television until they visit a family and they see that the screen is larger than theirs. From that day, they start longing. One person was confessing to me years ago. He said, I noticed a weakness in my life. I said, what is it? He said, if I see you eat food that I like, 
No matter how costly, I must, I must get it. However I get the money, I must get it. I told somebody last week about you know, the need to be precautious about her things. I said, there's nothing that bad. I just put it in the car. I said, there are some thieves. They don't steal until they see the thing. Meanwhile, there are some people, they don't need to see. They are seeing it in their minds. Crave for everything they see. Job said, because Job knows that if I always go in the direction of what my eyes see, one day I will end up in the blue sea. Crave. Crave. For everything we see. Let me tell you, somebody, one of the proofs of maturity is that you don't always go for what you see. That is, that is a revelation of discipline. If it is going for everything you see, you would have married 62 women as wives. That's, that's why some people can't just be up for long. They just go up, they come down, Lord, I'm sorry, every time because they always go where their eyes See, let me tell you, if you must go far, you must not always follow where your eyes are taking you. There is what is called the mind's eye. <laughs> the physical eyes can be deceptive. Can be deceptive. The third, the third strategy, still in that first John 2 in the NLT, it says, and pride in our achievements and possessions. The Bible tells me that the life of a man does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses. We live in a time that normal things have become abnormal. And our abnormal things are, are becoming normal things. We live in, in an age where thieves and robbers are celebrated. And people who embrace dignity of labor are relegated to the background. Sometimes, sad to say, I mean, it's a sad reality that even sometimes in sacred houses that we call places of worship, people are placed on seats based on what they have. And the Bible says God is not a respecter of persons. Listen, listen. If you are a respecter of persons, you will not be able to cruise at the frequency that God cruises. Because God is not a respecter of persons. What you should respect must be what God respects. So thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is the right scepter. Thou love and righteousness. And you hate wickedness. Therefore, I, I don't know why I love the word therefore. Therefore, the Lord thy God has anointed you with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Pride in our achievements. The Bible calls it the pride of life. In the case of Eve, she saw that it was fruit that can make one wise. You see, in the case of Eve, fruit good for food, fruit pleasant to the eyes. You saw that? Craving for everything we see. And fruit that will make one wise. Because Lucifer said, God knows that the day you eat it, you become like God. Meanwhile, in Genesis 1, the Bible says, The Godhead, let us make man in our image. And the Bible talks about hatching that plan. And God made man in his image and after his likeness. Then the devil came later. He says, God knows that when you eat it, you'll be like him. You're already like him. Listen, listen. Most times, the deceit of the devil is to tempt you to become what you already are. And it's a great disaster to fall for a temptation wanting to make you who you already are. Every attempt to become anything will change you from who you already are. And it happened to the first man. Because they wanted to be like God, they dropped from glory. I prophesy, may you not drop from glory. I declare you will not drop from glory. Your case will not be e cupboard. Listen, people, people say that the presence of God is perpetual without there are different levels of presence. 
There is the ever abiding presence where two or three are gathered in my name. And then the amidst God is omnipresent, is there everywhere. But there is also what is called the manifest presence of God. That is the e-cabal we're talking about. God was there, but not in manifest form. All that is in the world. Now, for you to live a victorious Christian life, I want to tell you that the moment you understand what is in the arsenal of your enemy, the victory is half won. So when you note that the enemy has no strategy, check anybody, check anybody, check David, check Solomon, check Moses, check Abraham, anyone that once got into trouble in the Bible. Moses got into trouble. He saw God face to face. He saw God's back. The Bible says he saw God face to face, Peniel. But Moses did not get into the promised land. God said, I will not get into that promised land. He begged. He said, you know what God said? I was afraid that day. He said, on this matter, don't talk to me about it again. And the man had, had so much work with God, I knew what God was talking about. If you talk to me about it, you could, you know, you could just catch fire. David fell into trouble. One of these three weapons got everybody who got into trouble in the Bible into trouble. Father Abraham, uh, uh, going to Eve, and maybe from uh, into um, Hagar, right? Maybe from her, God will answer my prayer. Meanwhile, in the eye of Subrandisa, in the eye of God, Sarah was already fruitful. Isaac was a reality in the realm of the spirit, but Sarah said, go into this woman as an alternative. God already has blessed you in the realm of the spirit with Isaac, but he said, go for Ishmael. And we have the problem of Ishmael till tomorrow because God blessed them with the covenant. He said, you will be a great people. That's why I tell people who pray against that Ishmael will die. Ishmael cannot die. God has blessed Ishmael irrevocably. In fact, the Bible says his neck will be on the neck of his brother. That is why you have Islamic persecution for most of He says, it's in the scripture, his hand will be on the neck of his brother. He said, but his brother will prevail over him. That is why when people say they want to change everything, they can't change his covenant. Glory to God. The man fell for one of these three things. Do you want to talk about Solomon? I guess he fell for everything. Loss of the, the Bible says one day, I was amazed that everything that came into Solomon's mind, he executed. Ah, everything is only is animals that behave that way, you know, responding to stimulus. Anytime they, they are stimulated to pee in the place, they are, so let me, I will even look like I pee on my body. That was the kind of um, life Solomon lived. He said, Listen, the Bible said, everything that came into Solomon's mind. He did not refrain himself from getting... Let, let me give you an example. Like Solomon said, how will it look like to put okra soup on, on noodles? And when you put okra, then you now pour, pour sandi, sardine and you pour titus. How will you do that? You now pour... You now pour... You know? And any time he conceives it, he does it. Can you see that? That's animalistic. Really? It means if just Solomon said... Ah, that girl that is passing, how will she look if she's not wearing clothes? I want to see how she looks. No wonder, in his lifetime, 1,000 women were recorded. Concubines and wives, 700 and 300. Ah, he tried. Anyone, anybody who ever got into trouble in the Bible fell for what? Check the Bible. Check the Bible. One of these three strategies. All or all. all. All, all that is in the world crave for physical pleasure crave for everything the eyes see and pride in our achievement let me pause as I close to address this matter your life does not consist in your possession Every time you attempt to rate yourself based on the things you have, 
you are a poor person. Listen, anyone who thinks prosperity, finances, riches is only in physical cash, the person is truly poor. That is why people do all sorts to get money. But the Bible tells me that it is the blessing of God that makes rich and this riches is devoid of sorrow. All that is in the world. You know, one of the things you need to do not to fall into this, he said, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. Jesus was telling his inner circle, watch and pray so that you don't enter into temptation. I just gave you the antidote for these three things. I just gave you the solution for these three problems. What is the solution? Watch and pray. That word watch does not mean you should be a vigilante in your village uh, and be opening your eyes every day. It's, it's part of it, but that's not all it is. To watch means to be circumspect. To watch means to be aware. To, to watch means not to be ignorant. Lest you are taken on unawares. To watch means to be informed. To watch is not to sit down. Now, because I said, you know, the, the church is a covenant people. Nobody can, can, can Islamize anything. To watch does not mean you sit down. I said they cannot Islamize us. You don't join politics. You are not part of the decider. You are not part of the policy makers. That is not to watch. To watch means you are involved. The Bible says Moses stretched his hand and divided the sea. The Lord told me that the implication of that is if you must divide the sea, you must stretch your hand. To divide means to determine who gets what. Don't complain that they are, they, are, they are promulgating evil laws when those who know good laws are doing nothing. You know, the student union cliche in the school I went to says, silence is a crime in an unjust society. He that knows to do good and does not do it, to him it's a sin. So, watch means participate. Don't be drowsy. Don't be sleepy. Don't be aloof. Don't say politics is a dirty game. Leave it for those who will make law that church should be closed forever. When you participate, one day, I hope they will not do law, they say, Female genital mutilation is a must. And once they pass it, it's only in court of appeal before God that you can get justice. To watch means to be proactive. To watch means you are not off guard. One guy fell into fornication one day. I know how, how it happens. He was expecting a visitor. Listen, he was expecting a visitor. And he was in his boxers. Nothing on that. Just boxer and only boxer. And he likes the lady. They like each other. You know, there's this deceit. You are deceiving yourself and nothing. And both of you know that there's chemistry. You say nothing, but you know that there's chemistry. You say nothing, but you know that there's chemistry. And somebody say, if chemistry lingers enough, it will become physics. You know, chemistry is internal. Physics is action. Action. And when physics graduates, it becomes biology. That's why I said, ah, I did not know. Listen. So he said, the lady just entered and uh, one thing led to the other and his body started changing. How will your body not change? Both of them like each other. Don't put yourself in arm's way. Watch and pray. They said, you, you, you carry your body, you carry yourself as a lady to a single guy's house. And you cannot say before God that this guy does not like me. And that thing came upon the guy. He said, the guy has been thinking, how will it look like if somebody, how do rapists even feel like? Let me even try it. And you are the first victim. Now, that, that's like carrying yourself to lions there. And I, I saw one brother years ago. He said he had fornicated in his life once. He said, why did he fornicate? He said, I just wanted to know how fornication looked like. I said, they didn't think whether rapture could take place. To watch is not to be stupid. Not to be stupid. To think or act without thinking. 
to watch does not mean to be too trusting to be stupid. You trust everybody. You trust everything. They hurt you once, you forgive. They hurt you again. Once, as it's going, they will so hurt you that you become hot. As they see you, people will be hot. Because you are too sheepish. Forgiveness is not the same thing as trust. Forgiveness is instant, but trust takes time. That's what it means to watch. Then pray. Let me tell you. You cannot so watch and discard the place of prayer. There are things that when you are face to face with, your flesh will fail you. Your intelligence will fail you. Have you read before you got to exam hall and you were dazed at your performance in the woeful performance you brought forth? You thought you knew and you performed. You said, no, it's just that it's working. But you, because you overrated yourself. I'm telling you that there is a limit to which the flesh can go. Therefore, pray. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life, the NLT says, craving for physical pleasure, going where your eyes lead you, and wanting to take pride in your possession. And the way to overcome these, I told you, you do what? You watch. (laughs) In our message, get up and take responsibility. Go and check it. That's how to win. You take responsibility and pray. Listen, there is a portion that only prayer can save you. So watch and pray. Did I tell you that outside of these three, the enemy has no strategy? It helps you to handle the devil like a piece of cake. That is the word of the Lord to you. I trust that the last time you were a victim of the enemy will be the last time. The last time you fell for the devil will be the last time. The last time you used all your savings to buy that restore will be the last time. The last time you used all your savings to just buy that thing you feel like eating. And after you finished eating, you started purging. That will be the last time. The last time you did not allow reasoning to dominate flesh will be the last time. In the name of Jesus Christ. I love to agree and pray for those who are believing God for the turnaround of that particular situation they are in. I want to agree with you because as we do together, your testimonies were Russian. Your testimonies were Russian. And I have the release to pray for those who are on the sick bed. Something is telling you you are going to die. I decree in the name of Christ, the resurrected Lord, rise up from your sick bed right now. I decree in the name of Christ, the risen Lord, you are healed from coronavirus. I decree in the name of Christ, the resurrected Lord, cancer disappears from your body. I decree in the name of Christ, the resurrected Lord, where you have been rejected, you will be invited. After being invited, you will be accepted. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody is tortured emotionally. I decree healing right now. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. You want to give your heart to Jesus Christ. You've been waiting for this moment. You know that you need it. It's my honor to lead you to Jesus Christ. Would you pray this prayer with me? Mean it. Believe it. Say, Lord Jesus, I accept your forgiveness. I invite you into my heart to be the Lord of my life. Thank you, Lord. By that prayer, you are now born again. Let me pray for you. Sin is rebuked. Guilt is rebuked. You are set at liberty to serve God all the days of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Until we come your way in the power of the Holy Ghost next time, keep winning by the instrumentality of God's word.